Yeah. It sounds like one of them beats from that boy. Sweet and sexy. Uh, what is it? Sweet and chocolate. Ooh, sweet and chocolate. Who said play so good, don't they agree? Sweet and chocolate. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a name my group sweet and chocolate. Not sexual chocolate. Sweet and chocolate. Yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, bringing you another podcast. Actually, I'm doing this right now. This, you probably get this. Uh, this podcast come out at 9 on Wednesday morning. I'm actually doing it at 4 a.m. in Wednesday morning. Yeah, getting it going, getting it going, getting it going. How you guys doing today? Um, Today podcast is going to be the third installment of Men and Women Let's Talk. And hopefully I can say some things in this podcast today to end the war of the sexes. That's what I'm attacking with this series. So the new war, the new culture war, is the war of the sexes. Men and women in relationships. Who fault is it, especially in the black community? Let's talk. Let's talk. Now, I went through a lot of the... The, 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 I went down a rabbit hole on YouTube the last few months on, on you know, the, 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 the culture war that is the war of the sexes. And I did not like what I was hearing. But, and I understood what I was hearing. I understood why I was hearing it. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about the what, when, the where, and the how. Uh, you know, or this case. With this, we're going to talk about the why there is a culture war um, for for the, between the sexes. What exactly is a culture war? Why and what, and then how to solve them? Right? We're going we're going to answer those three questions. But before we do that, you know what we always do. We like to get into a, a quick word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you today, Father God. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Holy Spirit. Father God, we ask you that you forgive us for all our sins that we commit intentionally and unintentionally. The thing that we do, Father God, that we do that's against you, Father God. I pray that you forgive us for them, but also help us not to do them. I give us strength to not to do them. I show us, Father God, who you are, your love, your will, and and and, and I hope that that makes us not want to do it. Are the ones we don't know we committing. We all make mistakes as human, and it's not good enough to make those mistakes. We have to, you know, stop them. And Father God, I pray that we, that we stop those sins. Father God, I pray for, I, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Father God, I always want to be in abundance of thankfulness. That's super important, thankfulness. And I just want to thank you. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to come in today. Give me the thing that you want me to say. Let them hear the things you want them to hear. Let me speak a word that can, 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 can heal. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. After we get into a quick word of prayer, it's time to go into the word of God. Um, today we're going to, um, the word of the week. Uh, and I want you really to take time and meditate on this word, man, because... I, I, I do this and everything, and you hear these podcasts, and you get a chance to meditate. Now, listen, I understand that you may not, a lot of you guys may not hear this as I put this out on that the Wednesday that I put it out, but you can take whenever you do this and just go seven days and say, I'm going to meditate on this word. All right, we're coming from Matthew 6 and 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things shall be added unto you. Let's go a couple up and then let's go a couple down. We're going to start at 30. 
Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the fields, which to, which to this day is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye little faith, ye of little faith, there take no thought saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all things, things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, of, I'm sorry, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all the things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought of the morrow, for the morrow shall through the through for the things of itself sufficient unto the days of evil thereof. I love this. I love this. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added. Right? See, for God's kingdom and his righteousness. It says, <laughs> the Gentile, they, 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 they go and try to, you know, add to this. So people of this world, they try to build these bank accounts to be so big and, and get more and more and more. And, and, and God said, no, 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 no. I want Job worries to be God and his His kingdom and his righteousness. But we should be, our only worry is how can we get more righteous? How can we be more like God? How can I find God and be more like God? This message needs to be taught in, 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 in the church today because the church has gotten far from this message. The message of search first the kingdom of heaven and let everything else be added. That is a message that 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 is that is dying out in the church in the body. Oh, I wish I could preach this right here. But I just want to remind you that 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 when when God says seek seek first to God and in right His righteousness, that's the thing that's missing. And 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 and, and today when we talk about this this this, this war of the sexes, ain't nobody trying to be righteous in this war. But we are commanded, we are called to see. I want to see marriages. I want to see people fall in love. Now the things of God is the thing that God put on here for us to, 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 to be in obedience to. And marriage is one. We should be seeking that thing. Marriage is something that, 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 that should be at the forefront of our seeking. Because a married man and a married woman, if they operate in their marriage correctly, they're righteous. They're righteous. So, 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 let's go down to 30. It says, it said, I love this. It says, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? What? Those are my, those are my needs, Father. I, don't I, don't I supposed to need that? God said, don't think no thought of it. Don't think no thought of it. God, oh, bless God. Think about this, yo. Think about this. Oh, the chair just made an entrance. The things that, the very things that we need to live, the very, Jesus is in the Sermon of the Mount and telling the people, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Worry about God and his righteousness. Don't, all that be added. <laughs> right? Let, 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 let me let me keep going. It says, uh, what shall we drink? It says, uh, wherefore shall we be clothed? For all things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have needs of all these things. God already know what we need, right? He, he know we are, but he says, seek first the kingdom. Bro, we get caught up in, in seeking the things that we want. But more than that, we get caught up in seeking the things that we need. And that, like, 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 like worrying about what we eat today, it shouldn't be at all our first thought. Our first thought should be, be uh, what, what God want me to do today? How God want me to be? What, what is God righteousness for me today? How do I be righteous today?
that that's how our life should work. That's the way it should flow. Bless God, somebody. I'm telling you, man, we, we God is so amazing, but you just focus on him. Stop worrying about what 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 you're gonna eat, what you're gonna drink. And when you live that type of lifestyle, usually you don't have that thought of money, right? You don't have that thought of, 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 of how to line my pockets. You don't have that thought of, of I'm looking for security in my bank account because that's what a lot of people are doing. A lot of people are looking for security in their, through their bank account. That's not what God wants from us. God said, trust me, you need a little faith. Be your faith up. Be your faith up. It says, take therefore no thought of the morrow, for the morrow shall take care, take, for the morrow shall take thought for, uh, let, me start, uh, let me start over. Therefore, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. Don't worry about the morrow, don't worry, listen. Go to sleep, sleep tight. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just worry about God. Put your mind on God. Keep your mind on God. And that's how you bring that success. See, what happened is somewhere down the line, you was told that you can't be successful and be with God. Somewhere down the line, you was told that you can't be God, or God successful ain't cool or God success ain't, ain't, ain't what it is. Search for the kingdom of God and watch everything that you desire and let your uh, that's your father. He loves you. If he if he care about a little bird being getting some food, what do you think about you? Right, right. It said that, that God put us in his likeness and his image. If he care about a little bird eating, how do you think about you? Man, this is talking to me, and I I thank God. I thank God. So that's the word of the, uh, the week, and, uh, and I really hope that you let that sit with you, man, and and let it talk to you for a bit and everything. And you, whatever you're going through this week, man, just just say that you know, um, search for the kingdom of heaven, uh, the kingdom of God, search for God and His kingdom, and let the things and His righteousness, and let the thing that you need just add be added. Just search, search Him. All right, so um, I, I last week we went right into it, right? We went right into the whole. Um, last week we went into the whole. I to, to the whole of breaking down on uh, Corinthians thirteen and part two of Men and Women. Let's talk. Today we're going to be going right back to the Word of God, and we're going to be breaking down Galatians five. Sorry, let me pull out my notes so I can just be factual. All right, we're going to be doing Galatians 5, 16, and 25. The war of the sexes, we're trying to kill that today. After today's scripture, I hope to show you that this is over. It's over. It's no more. Now, why is there a war of the sexes? Why is that happening? Like, 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 like you can say it, it, it's just an online thing, but online spills over the real life. Now, this is a small minority part, but it grows and it can grow fast and fast and fast. And the reason why it's that way is because of division. Division is a real, a real crucial thing. Division, Jesus said, the, uh, 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 a house divided cannot stand. Look at the power of division. And our enemy, or the enemy of God, he's not, he's not my enemy. I don't care nothing about it. But the enemy of God. Biggest weapon against his people and the people of God is division. Whether it be through racism, 
whether it be through sexism, but whatever you want, he uses the the idea or uh, 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 the, 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 the momentum or the strength of division. Division is powerful. It works. To divide, then to conquer. When you divide something, then you can conquer it. It's powerful and it works. And that's the enemy's favorite method. So now, as we're talking men and women, the enemy is now trying to divide us. Especially in the church. Especially the people of God. Now let's talk about a few things, right? Let's talk about the idea of, and we and we and we reached on this, and I'm always gonna reach on this, but the selfishness of the selfishness, low-minded men and women of the dating pool. There are so many people that's dating for themselves. And when you date for yourself, you're talking about destruction. She should be able to do what I want her to do. Or she should be what I want her to be. Or, now, we are not looking at each other to love one another or to, for me as a man to love her are, see, here's the deal. I am a, a man, right? And I love women. I love women. That was the R. Kelly. <laughs> he did the interview and, and they, 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 they put the little thing. He was like, I'm an older man that love all women. He said, I'm an older man that love all women. No, but I love women. It's something about y'all. As a man, as a man and masculine, it's something about a woman and feminine. That's that's what I'm attracted to. I'm attracted to feminine. I'm not attracted to masculine. I'm not. God didn't make me that way. And I thank God for him the way he made me to make the way he made me. So I, I need you, women. I can never hold that thought of the concept of I don't need a woman. There are things that I don't need a woman for, but overall I need a woman. Like, I don't need a woman to survive. Like, I'm gonna eat regardless of a woman. I'm gonna gonna have a place to stay, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna live regardless of a woman. I don't need a woman to survive. I probably, I don't need a woman to, to for my social life, to be really honest with you. I'm pretty, really good at meeting people. I got things in my social life, you know, where through people are, where through, you know, like, you know, different things that I can, I'll be fine socially. Boy, do I want one though. I want one because there is something that's inside of me that God seen that, okay, this is not right. Like, like, like God said, okay, I'm gonna pair you up with an animal. Let this animal, that animal, that, no, 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 that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense for you. So he put Adam to sleep and he made a woman. And that what woman, that that that's what made sense. As a man, that's what makes sense to me. Is a woman. Now, so we enter the dating world. With these concepts and these ideas of, I want to find somebody for me. Or she got to be like, I like. And not understanding that, 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 that when you get into the dating world for you, you may find somebody that you like, but you may, ch- you change. You would eat. You go five years later, you're not the same person you was. And that person now is no longer what you wanted. See, you see that whole idea of selfishness? Then you say, well, then what, what, what do you want to, what do you go in this shit for if it's not for your happiness? 
you go into the relationship, if we understand what the word of God said, the first thing we understood was to build, right? To build. He seen that Adam was was doing, he seen that Adam was working. He was like, no, 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 it ain't good for him to be alone. But Adam was doing. Adam wasn't just sitting around moping, oh, I need a woman, singing R&B songs. Oh, she make me, I miss her. No, that's not what Adam was doing. Adam was building. And then God said, okay, no, 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 this it ain't good for be alone. So first understand that relationship is for building. Finding someone you can build with. The second thing a relationship for is to procreate. To have kids. He said, he said now, now be fearful and multiply. Bring, bring forth the next generation. We, 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 we living in a culture. I seen a video today on YouTube where a guy said poor people should not be able to have kids. If you if you don't have a, a way to take care of them financially, then you shouldn't have them. That's what he said. Before people shouldn't be able to have them. Now, I don't believe I don't I don't believe in that. I don't believe that we should stop a kid from becoming into this world. But I do believe that as a man, I want to bring kids into the world in the best position possibly. I don't need the government to tell me that. I don't need nobody to tell me that. What I understand is God want me to procreate. I just need to put myself in the position to. So the first reason we need to have kids, I mean the first reason for, for, for marriage is to build, second is to kids. Building kids. And then thirdly, we are to find satisfaction in, in one another. Right? The marriage bed is undefiled. Right? If you look into like some of the uh, songs of Solomon and, and different things, having sex with a woman and woman having a sex with a man is not wrong. It's actually very beautiful in the right context. And that context is loving marriage. Well, I'm saying marriage, period, period. But better in a loving marriage where y'all love each other. Where y'all have that, 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 that want to please one another to a certain extent, nah, to a certain extent. And the reason why I say to a certain extent is if I'm not comfortable doing this, but you're comfortable with doing this and you forcing me to do something I'm not comfortable with, that ain't loving, that ain't happy. Right? Now, fellas, and the women, y'all on this too, but mostly fellas, bruh, get your sexual herbs, uh, your sexual urge in order. Get your sexual urges in order. Man, I was talking, I forget who was talking about, I don't know who I was talking to. God, dog, I don't know who I was talking to. But we was talking about how, like, if you look at history and some of the mighty men, they was taken down because their sexual urges, maybe I was talking to you guys, or oh, maybe I was talking on here, or maybe I was in a podcast or something, but their sexual urges was not checked. And they fell in sexual sin. And a lot of times when we enter relationship, men and women, but mostly men, we enter these relationships without our sexual men being in the way that he should be. In the way that he should be. So now instead of finding a woman 
are a man that's good for you, that that that's good for you mentally, it's okay, but physically he's not, he's not what I need. Physically, he's, no. We're, we're not called to find someone to satisfy our sexual needs. And and let's be let's be real. Women, hear me on this. Men, I was talking to you with the sexual stuff. Women, hear me on this. We're not called. You're not men are not called to take care of you. They're not called to take care of you financially. They're not called to say, okay, you can uh, you can stay home while I go out and gather resources. No. What a marriage is, is two people coming together, gathering those resources together, right? Adam was in the in there working. He didn't, God didn't make Eve so Eve just could sit home and, and be somebody who Adam bring more resources to. No, Eve had to get out there with him. Please hear me on this. Fellas. God didn't make Eve so she can stay, stay home and Adam just can go and knock her up, knock her off whenever he wanted to just, oh, I feel a sexual urge. I'm going to go knock her off. That's not how God did that. That's not, that's not how he did it. That's not what we call for. You're out of order, ladies and men and women. You're out of order. I want to make sure I ain't jumping ahead. Now, Let's hit on this, right? One of the reasons why marriages is struggling is because of a lack of understanding what, what's supposed to happen in marriage, right? A lack of understanding is a, is a destroyer of a lot of stuff. Now, I told you what marriage is for. Let's talk about the lead up to marriage. I think I don't have the numbers in in, 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 in a worldly manner to back this up, but spiritually, we're not supposed to have that many partners, not just sexually, not just sexually. See, when the Bible speaks of marriage, it speaks of it in a way of Two people coming together and working together. But what happens when you do that with this person and that person? Our modern day relationships with boyfriend and girlfriend, they are, 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 you might as well say they are marriages without the commitment. You're giving up yourself sexually. Most of the time, y'all move in with each other and y'all waiting for this magical thing to happen to say, okay, been together 18 months. Now I think it's time to go to the next level. Bruh. But you come into that woman and woman, you come into that man with so many emotional baggages from other relationships that you have had. We're not supposed to have all these other relationships. You're not supposed to have three boyfriends that you cohabitated with before you meet your husband. You are out of order. And now you're coming into marriage and saying, okay, I have habits because you build habits of each other. We build habits. Man, listen, you build habits of, with your co-workers. You build habits with your, your, your brothers and sisters. You build habits with, with your best friends. And y'all not even, and with those people, you're not even sleeping with together. You're not even spending as much time as you would with, a, with, your, with, your, with your spouse. So imagine now I'm 25 years old. No, 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 no. Imagine I'm 18 years old and I had no relationship. I fall in love with a young, uh, a young chick, right? I'm 18, she 18. We get into a relationship. We last in that relationship five years, five whole years. First year, we filling each other out. Second year, we moving in with each other. Third year, we living with each other. Fourth year, we living with each other. We lived together for two years, been together four. The fifth year, we breaking up. Do you know what just happened? 
That was a marriage in and of itself. You just didn't have, because you didn't have a ring on, you want to not call it that. But that's what it was. All these sexual partners, bro. All of these, these long, long-term relationship partners, that is killing marriages. And the reason why it's killing marriages is because now I'm three relationships in, right? 25 from 20, 25 hours relationship. I said our relationship for a year. From 30, from, from 20, 26. A 27 to 30, I was in a relationship. Set out a year, from 32 to about 30, 34, I'm in a relationship. Now I'm 39 and I'm looking for my wife, but I done been in a relationship with three other women. I done built different things with three other women. I done had three other women. We go to places that we ain't never supposed to go in a boyfriend relationship. We went there. We went to marriage places in the boyfriend. But now every time we break up, we don't understand we breaking up a marriage. So now I got baggages. I got things that I'm bringing in from this relationship to my marriage. I am not that innocent person and I understand you you say okay well no but what I'm saying is I done fought so many different things in the last three relationships that when I get into the uh, next relationship the first thing I'm gonna say is I don't wanna fight about this no more. I done fought these faults before. You a woman that that you you showing traits that these women showed. I don't wanna deal with you no more. You showing traits that these men showed. I don't wanna deal with you no more. We bring all of this baggage into the relationship that should never be there. Now we putting baggages, now we got baggages for uh, somebody else to hold that they should never hold. I come into a relationship with three broken families. I come into a marriage with three broken relationships fail. Not even saying with kids. Keep the kids stuff out of there. Now people coming in a relationship with kids. And now bringing kids into a relationship, you bringing that whole other woman into the relationship. I heard a situation, listen to this. I heard a situation where um, this this young chick, it, well, not young, this chick was finna marry this dude. But the dude had a, a baby with another woman. And she just wanted to like, the baby mama to not come to to, to, to Thanksgiving. He was like, no, that's my baby mama. This She's a part of this. Now he's bringing a whole nother woman into their relationship. Vice versa, women, you do the same thing with men. I know, I know in this battles of sexes, one of the things that, that men say is don't date a woman with kids. And I'm gonna echo that. As now, let me say this: I I would date women with kids. I would date a woman with kids. Because I love kids. I don't have a problem with if I, if needed to be provided for someone else's kids. I personally don't have a problem problem with that. Obviously, I'm built up for that. I'm a man of God. I have a, I don't have a problem with providing for nobody that need help providing for. But that's not every man. I can't put that on every man. So I do not believe a man should date if you don't have a man does not have kids. I don't think he should date a woman with kids unless those rare circumstances where he's like me and understand that I will provide for somebody else's kid. I know plenty dudes. I got family members I'm so proud of that, that how they stepped up to, to the plate of being fathers and when they didn't have to be. I had dudes in my life became fathers when they didn't have to be. But if the man is not built up for that, if you're not built up for that, then don't do that. Don't do that. If you're not built up to be a, 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 a man that can say, okay, I, will, I don't mind sharing my resources with, with, with somebody else's child, then don't do that. Don't do that. So I agree, a man who does not have kids with a woman should not date a woman with kids and vice versa. If a woman does not have kids, I don't think she should date a woman, a man with kids, unless, like I said, you understand that you're going to be selling, sharing, sharing your resources and time with somebody that doesn't belong to you. 
that is very rare. And I'm not even trying to be judgmental. I ain't saying if you do, you're a punk. And you're, I ain't, you're simple. I ain't doing all that. I'm just being real honest with you. Now, so too many partners. Too many partners. Listen, I'm going to say this. And I didn't live this out. This is a mistake of mine. I wish I would have lived this out. I wish I would have got married young. I wish I could have got married at 18. Just, 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 just got married and got with a woman that would I, I seen was worth it, and just fought with her and, and just stayed married. I that's how I wish. That's what I put on. That's what I preach to the twins. Get married young. So you don't have to deal with bringing all these emotional baggages into a relationship. That way you don't have to deal with people that you you thought was going to be the one and they wasn't. So I think, I know for better marriages, we we cannot, we got to look at the culture and say, okay, let's stop having all these partners. All right, so now we got two more issues that we're gonna talk about. Well, what, why marriage is so hard to be? Uh, why, why it's so hard for us to, you know, get past stuff? We got two more issues to talk about. Um, the next one is the myth of equality. Heard an interview this weekend with um Michelle Obama, and Michelle Obama said something that was, I guess. I guess some people thought it was triggering. She said, there's no such thing as uh, 50-50 or 100, 100. She said, I don't know where that come from. I was always told, I was always told that the 50-50 was wrong, right? Bringing 50-50 into a relationship, that was wrong. Yeah. Girl, listen, ain't nobody, ain't nobody got time for that. You bring a half of yourself to a relationship. But the, 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 the myth of equality that people believe, people really do believe that when you get into a relationship with a person, it's going to be equal. <laughs> like, 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 like <laughs> the value that we bring to each other is going to be equal. And that's a big myth. That's a big myth. Personally, right? Personally. When I look for, as I am now, looking for a wife, her money is not that important to me. Her money is it, 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 really not. So when it comes down to what she brings as far as financially, that's not going to be equal. It's not. But then she will have to understand that because her money may not be important to me and, and, and that she may not have, like, like I, I would prefer if I was to marry and we were to have kids, I would prefer my wife to stay home or I prefer a person to stay home and raise those kids from a standpoint of a stay at home parent. I believe the numbers have shown that it's like just remarkable. So with that understanding, whoever stays at home, they're not gonna have the pressures of financing in, 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 in the relationship that I want, right? They're not gonna have the financial uh, the, the burden of, 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 of financially taking care of the family. So towards money, they might have to like give zero percent where I may be giving 100%. That means I may have to be out there working like crazy. So that's going to be time. She's going to lose time with me. I'm not going to be able to give her, if she give a 100% of time, I may not be able to give 100% of time because I'm going to be out working. Whereas she may not be giving a 0% in money, but I'm going to be getting the whole thing in money. What I'm trying to show you is there's nothing that's ever equal. There's nothing ever 100 and 100. Um, matter of fact, um, Michelle says sometimes in her relationship, 
she found herself giving 30% while Barack Obama was giving 70%. And then it fluctuates. Sometimes she was giving 60 and he was giving 40. Like this, the illusion of there's going to be equality in, in, in anything inside the relationship. That's not how relationship works. That's not how it works. It's about give and take. But the reason why we have the myth of equality is because we have people out here worrying about whether they're going to get screwed over or not. Whether whether a uh, 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 man and woman are equal to each other. That's foolishness. Men and women, listen to me, people. Men and women are not equal. They will never be equal. They will never be equal. See, the, it, 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 it's that feminist idea. See, see, somehow we 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 we've made one less than the other. Right, socially. Or, or we believed socially that there's one less than the other, that, that women are less than men, and men are more because men can bring maybe resources. Right? Because men can bring resources, that means that they're, they're more, and that's not true. Because a man, just because a man can bring the resources doesn't mean that he can cultivate that resource, right? Doesn't mean that he can make that resource work for himself. Many men out there can make a lot of money, but they can't make money work for themselves. They need a woman. I'm not trying to go there. I'm just saying this whole idea that that that, that women are the lesser and this and that and, and, and to be and for women to be strong, they have to be equal to men. I just I disagree. It, it's never gonna work. If you got that mindset, then you don't have the mindset to be married. And you shouldn't get married if you think that 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 that, that equality is is a real thing in marriage. Don't get married. All right. Um, before we get into the the, the 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 Galatians of how to fix what we're going through right now, because there is a fix. Um, one more thing that we gotta look at is the lack of mothers and fathers like in togetherness. I don't know how it is, but in the black community. The lack of fathers in the home has hurt it in so many ways, but the biggest way that it hurt it is it never showed a man, a young man, how to deal with a woman, and it never showed a young woman how to be dealt with by a man. We didn't we didn't get that picture of, of, of men and women working together because the father wasn't there. I know, and, and I know a, a lot of people with this story of my mama did my daddy and my mama job. And I commend women, I commend women that did that, that was a mother and father. But the thing that you did not address is, how's your kids going to do it? How's your kids going to work with him? Uh, how's, how, how, how are we supposed to work? How are your sons supposed to work with a man? How are your daughters supposed to work? I'm sorry. How are your sons supposed to work with a woman? And how are your daughters supposed to work with a man? they never seen this. So when we look at the battle of sexes, it's, it's a lot of men, men this and men that and women this and women that because we didn't see it from our generation before us. We didn't see a man and woman in, 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 har in harmony. A man flowing in his righteousness as a man, and, 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 and not righteousness, but in, in his job as a man. And a woman flowing in her um, jobs as a woman. Right? All we were told is, a man is supposed to lead. Men, do you even know what that mean? Did you even go and research to what that mean? And then women, you're told that a man is supposed to be supposed to lead, but you were never even told how to be led. Do you even know how to be led? Do you even know what type of man to look for to lead? We needed that from our we needed that from our forefathers and our foremothers. We needed that from the from the from the people that came before us, and we didn't get that. 
So now we sitting up here fighting and warring with each other and everything, and our fathers and mothers should have been like, nah, that's not how it works. There's an episode of The Cosby Show that I absolutely love. Um, it's where uh, Denise and um, her husband, I forget the dude's name, they got married away from home, so they didn't have like a bachelor party. So the men wanted to throw him a bachelor party and everything. And the men was talking about strip strippers. And obviously the dude didn't want strippers, but it just came up and everything. So it started a war between the, the couples in the family, all the kids. At this, the, the kids was older at this point. And then three of them was married, like, like Denise, uh, and Sandra was married. And um, they was fighting everything like that. They were fighting everything like that. And Cliff and Claire, <laughs> Claire kind of got into it too. And she started kind of like fighting with Cliff. And then the grandparents came. And the grandparents showed an act of love that kind of made them forgive each other for what they was, what they was, what they were fighting over. This pig was petty. They were fighting over from the beginning, but they had somebody before them to show a love. And understand when we go into marriage today, today marriage. When I decided to marry a woman, I know that I'm gonna have to sometimes show her how to love a man, and sometimes she's gonna have to show me how to love a man. But I, th I, won't, I don't want to bring a child in this world without that happening where I can show her, show them how I love their mother and they can show them how they love their father. We didn't have that. And that is killing our community. That is, that is, that is, that is raping our community. These are issues that's inside our community. What's the fix? I don't like to talk about issues and how, how, how to end this war. Go to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm sorry, people. I, I only know the word, so I, I, I don't know how to I don't know how to do anything outside of it. We have verse 16, right? It says, then I say, walk in the spirit and ye shall not for the, uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the thing that ye would. But if you be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. But now the works of the flesh are manifested in which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uncleanness, uh, lasciviousness, Id uh, idolatry, uh, uh, witchcraft, hatred, vengeance, emulations, and, and I don't know how to say that word, emulations, emulations, uh, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, evian, murder, drunkenness, revealing, and such, uh, such alike. These are all the things that 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 we are taking into relationships. We are taking these things into relationships. Because we, we, we walking after the lust of the flesh. And I ain't talking about just how we lust for women and men. I ain't talking about just on that lust level. I'm talking about the, the, the things in our life that, that is not godly that we walk in. And then we get in with each other. You think we're going to be walking in? You think we're going to have a... Marriage is a, 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 a thing that God set up, God ordained. This is what God wants for people. If you're not of God, then you don't need marriage. Marriage is not for you. You can get civil unions up. They ain't for you. So when you walk into these things that's against God, guess what? You're going to bring these things into your marriage and your marriage is going to fail. See, a lot of times you're trying to put a, 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 a round peg in a square hole. Because when you walk in marriage, you walk in literally in what God ordained and something that God ordained. So it literally is something that 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 that, that you supposed. There is a certain way you're supposed to um, walk into it. It says, um, "We're at twenty-two. 
But the fruit of um, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, see, what, what, what you think will, will, will work best, right? A, a marriage that's full of, of the spirit, of, of the fuel of the spirit, right? Like love, joy, long-suffering. Think about long-suffering. Gentleness, goodness. I, 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 you know, just think about those things. The fruit of the spirit are the lust of the flesh. Which one do you think the, the, your marriage you have, you have more successful in? See, the fix is always going to be spiritual. But the fix for marriage, the fix to stop this culture war, is understand that there is a spirit of division. Number one, pray against that spirit of division that's in, that's trying to hit our community, that's in the people. Number two, Pray that we learn how to long the, 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 the walk in the spirit, the fruits of the spirit for each other, or with each other. It's simple. It's simple. We start doing these things, get away from the selfishness, because everything that, that, that we're fighting over is, is just selfishness. It's self first. This whole idea, and I, and I, and I, and I know y'all tired to hear it, cause, and I ain't trying to say it yet, because as long as this idea is out there, I'm going to fight against it. But the whole idea of putting yourself first, that's nowhere in the scriptures. That's nowhere in the scriptures. That is one of those doctrines that the church let in. And how did the church let in? Because the church went and said, okay, to be ordained by to be ordained by God now is you gotta go to college, graduate from the seminary, go to seminary, graduate from the seminary, now you can preach the word of God. Man, we gotta get back to the original things of God. That's the spirit. Not not some knowledge that comes from, from, from school. Not some knowledge that comes from man, but for, for the spirit. Get back to the Holy Spirit running your life. Get back to the fruits of the spirit, walking in the fruits of the spirit. And I guarantee your marriage will last long. You will have a long and healthy marriage, a long and healthy life with long and healthy kids. The war is over. The war is over. The war is over. Women, you want the man, you want the husband, then learn to walk in the spirit. And not only learn to walk in the spirit, make sure your husband is walking in it too. Or make sure that man that approaches you, that man that wants to be in your life, make sure he's walking in the spirit too. Because if he's not walking in the spirit, then he's walking in lust, walking in flesh. Either he's going to walk in the spirit or he's going to walk in the flesh. You can't do both because they're going to war at each other. The word of God said they're going to war after each other. 16. Then I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So they cannot be the thing that they cannot be the thing that ye would uh, that ye would. But if you led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The war is over. The war is absolutely over. Men and women, let's walk in the Spirit. Let's walk in the spirit. I want to thank you guys for um, stopping by here today. Um, Go and check out the other two parts of the podcast of the series. I had a good time. I hope this helped you. I want you to know that I love you and God loves you. God bless you.